Hi, kiddo, as well. Out there shoveling some snow. It's kind of cold out there. All right. Today, we're going to talk about healthy food choices. You know, we talked about nutrition. We talked about, again, guidelines, the food pyramid, um, choosemyplate.gov um, about what we should get as far as meats and vegetables and grains and fruits and dairy and stuff like that. So today we're going to talk about making and continually making proper food choices. So page 126, please. Lesson 5.3. Think about your eating habits. Are you a snacker? Do you like to eat several small meals during the day? I'm not going to write a paragraph, but I want you guys just to think about that. So me, I, again, I could not find a video I really liked about different dietary lifestyles that people do, but I'm a, I'm, I'm big into low carb. So I like to have my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Again, sometimes if I eat a big enough breakfast, I have the word it satiated myself enough that I can go seven, eight hours and then have um, dinner. Again, that's also something called um, intermittent fasting, where you eat certain foods during a, you eat your food during a certain time, then you go 12, 16 hours without eating, which is okay because most of that time that you're sleeping. But that's something I like to do. I'm not huge into snacking. I like to eat my breakfast. You know, if we're at school, I'll eat breakfast, I'll eat a small lunch, and then I'll come home and I'll eat dinner and have, you know, maybe a little after meal snack, like some almonds or nuts. If I'm not at school, I usually eat a bigger um, breakfast. A lot of times I'll skip um, lunch and then I'll just have dinner and a snack afterwards. So in this section, we're going to learn about making responsible food choices, foods that are especially nutritious. Excuse me, what foods to limit or to avoid in your eating plan and how to maintain a healthy weight. We're going to learn about things like calcium, saturated fats, cholesterol, sodium, calorie. And then we're going to learn about um, a couple eating disorders, anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. Now, again, there's unfortunately some people have to make certain food choices based off. Unfortunately, some people are born with a disease called diabetes. Diabetes is where um, the insulin attacks your liver and that sugar. So people who are diabetic have to be very careful about the sugar they eat. There are some people that have a predisposition. They have high cholesterol or high blood pressure. So they have to watch their sodium intake. They have to watch um, certain foods they eat, certain fats. So influences on your food choice. Why do you choose the foods you do? It may simply be because you enjoy eating a certain food. Or, becomes, or perhaps because your friends eat it. Some foods may be family favorites or part of your cultural heritage. You may choose some foods because they're a good value or because they're convenient. You may choose other foods because they're in season or popular in, the, in your part of the country. Finally, advertisements can influence your food choice. So let's talk about certain things like that. Again, with cultural heritage, we know Pueblo is very, um, has a large um, Spanish and Italian culture. So that's what we see with Pueblo. We see a lot of um, Spanish or Mexican food restaurants, a lot of Italian restaurants, Italian food restaurants. And we see a lot of shops, bodegas that sell a lot of that stuff here. 
when we look at good value and convenience, you know, we look at things like cup of noodles, ramen noodles, again, because, hey, they're cheap and it's real quick and convenient to make them. Again, we look at sometimes foods in season, you know, pumpkin, strawberries, um, parts of the country. Again, living here in Colorado all my life, um, trying to think of part of the country food that we eat in Colorado that they don't in other places, which I can't really think of. And finally, advertisements. Again, especially when you're little kids, you know, you see that advertisements can have an effect on you. If if something looks yummy, you may want it. Um, something tastes yummy, you want it. If a cartoon is um, that you like influences you. You know, this athlete, this movie star is drinking this certain drink or eating this certain food. You may be influenced to want to try that food or that drink. So we see this um, food preference in your family can influence your, few, your food choices all of your life. And, you know, we could pause this and say, what are some of your family's favorite foods? Which we will pause. We're going to talk about this. Unpause. Okay, next page. Page 117. Nutrition during teen years. Not 117, idiota. Um, sorry, sorry, don't yell at me, 127. No matter what influences your choices, you want the foods that you eat to help you stay healthy. During your teen years, your nutrient and energy needs are as high as they'll ever be. That's why you need to choose foods wisely. Eat plenty of foods high in complex carbohydrates. These starchy foods give you most of your energy. Again, like rice, potatoes, beans. Again, you need all this energy because you're going through puberty. As your body is growing and changing, your metabolism is very high. It burns quick. That's why your parents, your guardians, just look and they're amazed at how much food you can just put down before you eat dinner, when you eat dinner, and then after you eat dinner. You know, that old idiom of you're going to eat me out of house and home. Another important nutrient for teens is calcium. Can take notes on this. Calcium is a mineral that helps your body build healthy teeth and bones. It's also important for muscular function. Dairy products are an excellent source of calcium. Canned fish with soft bones, such as salmon or sardines, tuna, dark green leafy vegetables, or other good sources like spinach, kale, broccoli, cauliflower. Again, because we know some people can't eat those dairy products because they're what's known as lactose intolerant. Because dairy has a mineral, a nutrient, a vitamin known as lactose. Some people, it's not good for them to eat. It's not that lactose will kill them, but they'll get gas. You know, they get a little nauseous. They poop a lot because of it. Think of the Big Bang Theory, for those of you who watch it. Leonard Hofstetter. You know, they always make the jokes about him being lactose intolerant and how if he eats certain things, it's just, it's, he's going to be in the bathroom a lot. Planning for good nutrition. Maybe you're too busy. Maybe you're so busy that it seems hard to fit healthful eating into your schedule. Try tucking some healthy snacks into your school or lunch bag. Along with the usual selection of fruit, nuts, and raisins, you can also experiment with foods from around the world, such as pita bread and hummus. Make a time for breakfast. Ask someone to set aside a plate of food for you if you miss a family dinner. When you eat at a fast food restaurant, try having a salad instead of something high in fat. And order juice or milk to drink instead of those sugary sodas. Again, I like to make my breakfast and lunch, especially during school, um, on Sundays before football or just hanging out, you know, hard-boiled some eggs. 
I'll get my yogurt and my my uh, 5% FIA yogurt, just the plain stuff. And then I'll um, cut it in now. I'll put it in some a bowl and I'll cut up some strawberries, put some blueberries in it, mix it together and put it in. And then I also um, will cut up an avocado daily to have an avocado because that's some that, avocado is a superfood. It's great healthy fat. And then I will, um, you know, do my lunch meats and my cheeses and maybe I'll do a lettuce wrap with it. And I prepare my lunch and my breakfast you know, for school weeks beforehand. It is best to get your food energy from foods high in carbohydrates and low fat. Name some high carbohydrate foods that are good choices for teens. I'll let you guys decide that. Again, my choice in life is I I go the opposite. Again, I still do eat carbs. I just do low carb. I choose to go high fat. You know, I choose to have my lunch meats and my cheeses. Page 128. Guidelines for healthy teens. Now, before we do that, let's talk about worthier salt, which is another idiom. People though, today don't think of salt as important or precious. The ancient Chinese, however, used salt as a basis of the tax system. Roman soldiers received their pay or salarium in the form of salt. This is the source of the English word salary. Why might salt have been useful in ancient times? Pause. We'll talk about that. Unpause. Well, one of the reasons it is, kids, is because salt and sugar are preservatives. That's what we use to keep foods from spoiling we store them in sugars and salts that's why that all food when we say something is sugar free it's sugar free because we don't put artificial sugars into it every food is going to naturally have sugars and salts in it and again we use sugars and salts to again preserve food Using the food pyramid or myplate.gov is just one way to choose healthy foods. There are several other steps that you can take to get all the nutrients you need. The USDA has summarized these steps in the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. Following the Dietary Guidelines is as easy as A, B, C. Simple as one, two, three. Oh, easy as do, re, mi, A, B, C, one, two, three. Shut up, Todd. Hi. Okay, sorry. These are the three basic points to follow. A, aim for fitness. B, build a healthy base. C, choose sensibly. A, aim for fitness. The following part of the dietary guidelines focuses on balancing the food you eat with physical activity. Being physically active every day throughout your life is one of the best things you can do for your body. You will be stronger and have more energy. You will also help you maintain a healthy weight. Some people look at it. I myself always like to eat and then go go for my walks. I like to um, eat and then weight lift because then I have that food to help me because I'm built because I'm losing calories. Um, when I'm walking, when I'm exercising, when I'm lifting weights. There's people who believe that sometimes you should go for walks or lift weights and then eat because then that you're getting that energy back. Again, there's science all throughout the Internet and YouTube. You can go out through it and find all you want. Build a healthy base. The second part of the dietary guideline advises you to build your eating plan on a healthy base. This means eating enough foods from the bottom three sections of the food guide pyramid. Letting the food guide, or sorry, letting the pyramid guide your food, food choices is the first step in building a healthy diet. Another important key is to remember variety. Choose a variety of different foods that will help you get all the nutrients you need. Lastly, keep the food in your, you eat clean and safe. 
If you don't, your food may contain harmful substances and make you sick. To protect yourself, keep hot foods, hot and cold food. Sorry. To protect yourself, keep hot foods hot and cold foods cold. Always wash your hands before handling food. Always wash your foods that need to be washed before you do that, too. Find choose sensibly. Finally, the dietary guidelines advise you to choose your food sensibly. This means choosing the foods you know are healthful. It also means going easy on foods and increase your risk of health problems. For example, moderate your intake of fat, especially saturated fat. Saturated fats are fats found mostly in animal products such as butter, meat, milk, and egg yolks. You can take notes on those, please. Eating too much saturated fat can increase your level of cholesterol. Cholesterol is a wax-like substance in our bodies produce and need in small amounts. There's two types of cholesterol. You have an HDL and you have an LDL. And then you have your whole cholesterol. And you also have things that's known as triglycerides. I do something like that every year for rally. I will do a biometric test. What you do is you fast the night before. And then they go and they, you know, you can have some water, but you don't do anything. And then you go and they take your blood. And because you fasted, you haven't ate or drank anything besides water for at least eight hours. It measures your blood to see, do you have healthy HDL, LDL, triglycerides, and whole cholesterol? Again, eating less saturated fat helps lower your risk of heart disease, cancer, and other serious diseases. Watch for added sugar. Again, foods with a lot of added sugar are often low in other nutrients. A little added sugar is fine, but sugary foods should not take the place of more nutritious ones, such as fruits or low-fat milk. Again, it's hard because right now we can't get into um, what's uh, nutrition labels. We'll get into that um, the next week, the week of... Um, December 7th, we'll go back a bit, because a big thing to understand is that when we have things like Coke Zero, Pepsi Zero, all these sugar-free things, or, you know, they say they don't have this, you have to look at the food labels to look at, like, ingredients in there. There's a lot of synthetic sugars that food companies have that technically they can say this isn't sugar. Well, it's a synthetic, which is just as bad for you. But we'll get into that more when we look at um, nutrition labels. Watch your salt intake. Salt contains sodium, a mineral that helps control the amount of fluid in your body. Too much sodium can promote high blood pressure in some people. Again, read food labels to find foods with less sodium. Again, when we have salt, we want to make sure that we are eating what's known as iodized salt. Iodine is another vitamin that we want to take in. And we get that through our salt. Again, we do not want to eat salt that is low or has no iodine. Smart snacking can help you meet the extra nutritional needs of your teen years. Time your snacks for two or three hours before mealtime so you won't feel like skipping meals. We see in this picture that toast, English muffins, and hot cereal are popular breakfast foods. However, a bagel pizza or a bowl of leftover rice and beans will also get you off to a good start in the morning. Again, what are your favorite breakfast foods? We can talk about that. We can pause. Unpause. I love bacon and eggs. I love bacon and pork. Again, because I'm low carb, I don't eat a lot of um, 
carbohydrates, so I don't eat bread. So instead of bread, I like avocado and jalapeno and a little and half a tomato because tomatoes, even though that they are a fruit and they are very good for their lycopene, they're very sugary. Page 130, maintaining a healthy weight. Many growing teens fear that they weigh too much or too little. However, at your age, weight differences are normal. Try to gain or lose, trying to gain or lose a lot of weight can interfere with your normal growth and development. If you have serious weight concerns, however, ask your doctor for advice. He or she will assess your weight and if necessary, suggest a plan that is right for you. The role of calories. The amount you weigh is related to how many calories you consume and how many you use. A calorie is a unit of heat that measures the energy available in foods. Everything besides water, children, everything has calories in it, pretty much. Um, pickles don't have a lot of calories. Cal um, celery, cucumbers don't have a lot of calories. Those things, it actually takes more, you burn more calories eating those things than you do taking in those foods. Your body uses this energy as you go about in your daily activities. You use up to as many calories as you take by eating. Your weight will stay the same. If you consume more calories than your body uses, your body will store the extra calories as fat. About 3,500 extra calories, or sorry, no, that's right. About 3,500 extra calories per week add one pound to your weight. Again, I hate the fact they say extra calories. 3,500 calories is equal to one pound. So similarly, your body needs more calories than you're taking in. It will turn its stored fat into energy. As a result, you will lose weight. Now, you got to be careful about that, get about not eating. And we're going to talk about that with anorexia and bulimia because eventually what will happen is that your body will start taking the fat that is in your body for its energy. You have to eat. And again, it will take that fat, put it in your liver, and make it into a sugar. And again, that's... You'll get yourself sick, and you'll start hurting yourself, and eventually you can die. Feeling good about your body is much more important than the numbers on the scale. Write down five things you like about your body. Page 131. You can maintain a healthy weight by eating right and being physically active. Consume as many calories as your body needs for the activities you're doing. Don't worry too much about this, what the scale says. Instead, try to be comfortable with your body. Your growing years your, it's, are not a good time to try to lose weight. A healthy weight, a healthy body is a wonderful thing no matter what size it is. Here are some more tips you can do to maintain a healthy weight. Choose your food wisely. A slice of bread with peanut butter has about as many calories as a bag of potato chips and it's more nutritious especially if we're talking, you know, wheat bread and maybe a nut butter, like an almond butter. Snack mostly on healthy foods. Again, carrots, almonds, cheese. Eat enough to take away the feelings of hunger. Eat slowly and take time to enjoy your food. Stop when you feel full. Again, this is where I should know this before I talk to you about it. But I'm pretty sure ghrelin is the hormone that tells you you are hungry to eat. Um, leptin is the hormone that tells you to stop eating because you're feeling full. Always eat breakfast. Again, there's a reason why they call breakfast the most important meal of the day. Try not to eat too many foods that are high in fat. These foods are usually high in calories and also contribute to health problems. I eat a low-carb diet, so I 
That's all I'm going to say on that. Drink plenty of water. Again, that we, we can't say enough. Drink plenty of water. And again, sugary drinks like soda and Gatorade and especially monster energy drinks are not a substitute for water. Stay physically active. Again, there's a reason people say get 60 minutes of physical activity a day. Again, we're not saying lift weights. We're not saying run. We're not saying jumping jacks. We're not saying something as simple as just going for a two to three mile and a mile walk a day, especially outside, is perfect for you. Because it is a cardio exercise as well. And you're getting outside. You're getting that vitamin D. That stuff is great for you. Eating disorders. Before we get into that, let's talk about this picture. People with eating disorders may become obsessed with their weight. Why might a person with a healthy weight believe that he or she is overweight? We're going to pause and ask that question. Now, unpause. Eating disorders. Many people's self-image are closely tied to their body weight. Some people think they need to be thin to feel good about themselves. People who become overly concerned with their weight may develop eating disorders. Extreme eating behaviors can seriously damage the body. These are most common among teen girls and young women, but occur in males as well. There are three main types of eating disorders. Again, please take notes on the blue word and the um, italicized words. Anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder in which a person has an intense fear of weight gain and starves himself or herself. Victims with this disorder are obsessed with the idea of controlling their body. They eat far fewer calories than they need to stay healthy. They often exercise excessively and become dangerously thin, but still see themselves as overweight. You know, they will, people who are anorexic will go to the point of just eating and just drinking, just exercising and drinking water and basically eating nothing to the point that their brain, again, their body starts taking the fat that is in their body because you need, your body needs energy. It needs calories. And what it's taking, it's taking your stored fat for that energy. And eventually, again, your body will just shut down and it'll go into failure. Bulimia nervosa is an eating disorder in which a person repeats, repeatedly eats large amounts of food and purges by vomiting or using laxatives. Victims may also may exercise excessively even though their weight is often normal. Again, people do that to, again, that vomit, they get rid of that weight. Again, and when you vomit, that's not good because that's messing up your esophagus. Again, that's not healthy for you. The first step to treating an eating disorder is to seek professional help. Name, pro name some professionals who can help with an eating disorder. Again, just your regular um, primary care doctor. There are doctors, which I don't know the name offhand, some dietitians. Again, your teachers, your friends, counselors, your principals, your parents, anyone can help you with this. Finally, binge eating is an eating disorder in which a person binges but does not purge or exercise excessively. Victims may be overweight, often seesaw from losing weight to gaining weight. So again, they'll eat a lot and then they'll go into almost like an anorexia. And then they'll eat a lot again. And then go anorexic again. Eating disorders are a mental health problem. If you or anyone you know has a symptom of an eating disorder, talk to a trusted adult about getting professional help. The sooner a person receives treatment for an eating disorder, the likelier he or she is to recover from it. Okay, so we're going to stop there for the day. Again, we'll do some review questions on that, but I want to 
do some videos um, on this as well. Some of those TED Talk videos, those TED Ed ones. So we're going to watch some of those, and then you guys are going to do questions. So this um, is going to take two days worth of what we're talking about. So this will probably take um, Wednesday and Thursday of the week of December 2nd and 3rd, and then we'll continue um, Lesson 4 and 5 next week. If you have any questions, as always, children, please contact me on Schoolology. Thank you very much and have a good day.